um, okay, everything's working, sounds like it. Uh, so I'm really not gonna talk about education as education, because I like you guys all know, it's a really, really scary word. People go, okay, how boring is this gonna be? So what I wanna talk to you about more is about youth and kids and how to engage them and how to remember to be a kid, because come on, we're in VR and it's all starting off somewhere and let's give it a go. So. Imagination. So since I was a toddler, I became cap captivated with imagination. I grew up with people like Royal Doll, Dr. Seuss, Sesame Street. And what you didn't realize as a kid is they taught you how to think and be creative, how to open your mind and see things differently. I still today know things in Spanish I never thought I'd learn, but I learned them in Sesame Street. And from there, it opened me up to wanting to learn more and understand more. And naturally, I progressed towards VR, media, film. I, I became interested in people like Terry Gillian and Time Bandits when I was a kid. The idea of being transported into a whole new realm in your closet was beyond fascinating as a child. And then from there, you get into things like Stanley Kubrick. And you see how he works with the camera and how it changes your world, and how he took the camera every time he crafted every scene to create a certain scenario and a different story. Every movie he did was different, and I think that was beyond amazing. It blew my mind, and I still need a new, I still wanted to know more. So, it brings me to one of my first gifts my parents ever gave me. It was a typewriter. It sounds kind of random since we're talking about VR here. But I was handed this typewriter and I sat there and bashed on the keyboard and played with it. But I discovered this really, really bizarre letter, G. But at the time when I was a kid, because I was about three or five, I didn't know that was a G. So I'd spend weeks trying to figure out what this strange graphic on my computer was because it wasn't the same G you saw on the keyboard. This opened me up to the possibilities that what you wrote with your hand wasn't necessarily what you saw on paper. It's a whole different context. I understood what typography was at five years old. How was I to know that this immersive piece of just random technology, I didn't know what it was, was going to unlock who I am today? How that G brought me through that education and design in a media, and it made me understand things and ask questions, because I started asking questions then. So that brings me to the classroom. We all know this is what we think of the classroom. Standing there and having some lady or man talk to us about what we're supposed to learn out of textbooks that were written how many gazillion years ago about some archaic topic and going, how does this apply to my future? Or why am I interested in this? Or why do I want to be interested in this? So what classrooms are trying to do is trying to unlock these hidden talents inside kids and make them want to ask questions. Make them want to understand things and become someone in their futures. This is where I think VR is undeniably fascinating beyond belief. It allows us to bring immersion. Immersion in a way that a textbook was never able to give us in the classroom. We had slideshow presentations and we saw films and it was all fun, but we never got to immerse the things just like this is gonna happen to us nowadays. So with this immersion, we're allowed to bring kids and people us into landscapes and scenarios that you would never be able to interact with normally, like let's say diving with sharks. I was the other day listening on the radio, on BBC Radio 4, on the way into work, and I heard this really fascinating interview with a lady called, I believe her name was Karen Roberts. And what was really interesting about this lady's interview is she taught at a university about how water floats. Okay, you're like, water flowing, okay, whatever. She goes, when she was teaching her students, it wasn't, it was really hard for them to understand what it is she was trying to get across and how when water changes directions, it does this, it does that. 
So she decided to bring kids, her class, down to the riverbank, throw things off the bridge and look at it. And everyone's like, yeah, yeah, we're looking at the water, so-and-so. And then she goes, wait a minute, I need to take this one step further. They're not quite getting it. So she decided <laughs> to put them in wetsuits and throw them off the bridge and watch half her class, class float down the river. What she found was really fascinating about this was they remembered everything, and then they asked questions for days after. Because the class was able to immerse themselves and see it firsthand what was actually happening. And this is where I believe and understand where, where VR is taking us for kids, is that it unlocks an ability for them to see something firsthand and, and make them ask questions, want to ask questions bring those questions back into the classroom and challenge their teachers. So this is where it's brought me to today. I've worked in kids television for many years. I've created stuff on TV, 2D, and moving into 3D. I've teamed up recently with a really fascinating group called Curioscope. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with them. If you're not, you should be. They are creating uh, educational platforms for kids. And this is their first launch. It's called the Great White Shark Experience. I'll let you guys watch it. Um, that kids, when they put the headset on and die with these sharks, they're completely wowed. First of all, they're dying with the sharks. They think it's, it, they jump, they, they scream. They, I've seen them crawl on the floors with excitement. It's, it's insane, it's, it's amazing to watch. But what they don't realize is they're learning at the same time. And that is the beauty of it. Education doesn't have to be boring. <laughs> it, it, it sparked so many conversations about it, let alone one of the main ones that was asked a lot was, how is this a female shark? And I said, well, watch it again. Look, do you see any male parts? Like, is there male parts? And it carries on a debate after that. And then they go, oh yeah, and we saw the inside of the shark. I thought the sharks were real. I'm like, no, no, the sharks were animated. So it goes on from there. So VR. We also do things like AR. So I'm not sure if you've seen this. It's called the virtual reality. It was another solution for us to talk about anatomy with kids and biology. Uh, we did a test run in the classroom, and I asked kids what were the worst topics? What did they hate learning about? And one of the biggest ones, funny enough, was biology. And the kids like, I hate it. It has lots of big words. I don't get it. It's in a textbook. It has funny drawings. It's boring. Blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, by the end of today, you guys are going to love biology. I'm like, yeah, whatever. So we showed them this. We brought in t-shirts in and, a, and an iPad and showed them what this t-shirt can do. So this t-shirt allows kids to see what the internal anatomy is on themselves, interact. We had 
the kid dragging the teacher over, going, what's this called? What's this called? How does this work? And every single one of them said, can I have this to learn from? Can I study with this? I want to know more. And that was the most exciting, rewarding thing I've ever been faced with when you work on something and kids are directly engaged. Oh yeah, by the way, this was on Kickstarter. It's funded, it's being made, it's happening. And it's going even farther beyond that, but we can't tell you everything today. <laughs> but you guys can check them out. So, as I am not gonna go in the whole how to make this, how to be a first person viewer, how to line up your, your site, how, you know, all that kind of stuff, because even, even talking to people about this all day, you guys understand that you'll work in the industry. But we all know that VR is still in its baby steps. It's beginning, and it's really, really important in these baby step times is that we craft content that is worthy to see, worthy to engage, and worthy to get people to want to come back. Because the biggest fear is, is we just give them anything to view. They're not going to want to come back. This will fizzle out. Not in the, it'll come back again because there's so many people passionate about it. It's not going to be completely gone. What we need to do is take things and make things on technology we have today. Instead of waiting for the vibe to happen, we have phones. If you have a phone, a smartphone, families are already hooked up in VR and they don't even realize it. So making content that access the phone in the home already is really, really, really key. So, I just, like I say, my best way to describe it, um, everyone has a first. It's like having your first kiss. Make sure it's a good one, because if you have a bad kiss, you don't want to do it again for a while. <laughs> so that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed a little uh, intro into education. <laughs> Thanks so much, Kim. You still got those fans of yours on side after that. <laughs> um, so yeah, quite a distinct expertise here. Any questions? Uh, Go on. <laughs> well, no one else is fair. So you get it. <laughs> yeah, um, one thing that um, obviously is a problem with any sort of film. I mean, the the, the underwater experience is great. You can look around, see all the fish, and, I, and, I, and I've tried those experiences myself, and they're great. But surely you run into an immediate problem when you try to do some sort of education like that. As we saw on the screen, it's great we saw the shark's body, but if you show the kid, you might be looking over there somewhere. So how do you how do you get the person to look at what's important? That's you know, that obviously works on screen or two D because we saw the shark become transparent. But if the kid's excited and looking around and this is what's important, how does that work? Well, everything's done in three contexts. You have visuals, you have audio, and you, you know, and it all ties together at the same time. So when you're creating immersive, immersive experiences, you got to keep that in, in note and in the back of your mind. So the beauty about sharks is that we have a lovely voiceover that sounds like you're talking with a marine biologist on your headset when you're in the immersive experience. So while she's talking, she's explaining things to you. So you are your your auditory is clued in, and you're learning things at the time. You may miss the internal organs, but the beauty about VR is that you can play it again. And you, every time you play VR, you pick up something new. So every time you re-immerse yourself in, this, in these experiences, you're picking up something new. It's not watching the same thing over and over and over again. That's the way it should be. So education, they should see something different every time, or they just want to see the same thing over and over again. They want to say, see the internal organs. A lot of people, they see it, they throw it off, they go, you got to see it next. So, and every experience should be tailored specifically to the topic you want to teach. So this was a storyline that we created specifically for the Great White Shark. So if we taught something about engines, we'd do a completely different thing, just so you would make sure that we get the kids' attention or the adult attention at the moments we want. Okay, that's great. I think <laughs> directing consumer gaze, it could be a whole conference, so uh, yes, you okay. did that in the <laughs> very eloquently uh, dealt with, described there. Um, the chat, who brought his own mic? Is it, um, is it a single one VR situation, or do you have multiple kids all watching it at the same time? And if you do, how do you sync the watching them at the same time? At the moment, it's just one. But with technology and everything changing, it can always be multiple. 
uh, classroom experiences. Right now, this is all phone-based technology, so it'll be putting it on. It also, it plays off of YouTube as well, so it's not just headset-oriented. Uh, it's endless. If we were asked, like Google Expeditions, everything on that right now is all class-led. Everyone has their iPads controlled by the teacher. So again, it's depending on the situation or the scenario or what people want it to be. But at the moment, Great White Sharks and the body experience is all individually led. Great. Oh, brilliant. We've got more hands up. This is good. So, um, oh, I didn't even spot that hand. I was looking on this side. <laughs> the chap over there, then we'll come down these three. You've all, you're all noted. Sorry, okay. Um, <laughs> how do you plan to... Um, to bring this to market, is it? Are you going to sell it to head teachers, or do you plan to for, for kids to use it at home with their with their smartphones? Because kids have smartphones nowadays. How do you how do you plan to, to take it to market? Yeah, that's a that's a good question. Um, so when they did the Kickstarter, we actually learned a lot about going to market. Uh, not only were they doing a product where VR and AR are so new. It's um, education is a tough thing to bring to market. So where they went with this was uh, quite lovely, is that it's a product to go into the homes. It's not a school-based product. It can come into the classroom and can be used as a tool with the teachers in the classroom. But mainly, it's an experience that kids get to enjoy at home and to learn and bring that experience back to the class with them and want to ask more questions. So yes, it is going, so we've been talk, talk, so it goes to the Science Museum, and all that kind of stuff, it's uh, all over the place at the moment, so, yeah. <laughs> Great, and we had a few questions, uh, yeah, let's start from the back and move our way forward through you three, so, uh, great. Okay, so, um, a lot of kids are struggling with uh, math, and, and it's a very uh, abstract thing, that's probably why it's so hard to learn. Um, do you have any experience with, uh, with the VR education for, for math or know of any ideas there? Well, at the moment, I don't know of any exact VR educational for math things, but it's actually one of the talks that Periscope is constantly talking about is math. And one idea of, of multiple ones in the back burner at the moment is something like as basic as we did a uh, catapult experience where the kids have to load up catapults and fire it at trajectories. But into, into doing that, they would have to discover what trigonometry was, but done in a way that opens up their mind to trigonometry, it doesn't scare them with seeing this formula and say, this is what you're gonna learn. They realize at the end of it, they've learned a mathematical com uh, combination that they're learning in their educational systems, but doing it through entertainment. So it's, it's an immersive and a practical ap application. Great stuff, yeah. I guess it was like some quote about music being counting without knowing it. I guess Gates <laughs> is doing maths without knowing it anyway, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, ready. So I've got a, a build on, I think it's the previous question really. Okay. I think it feels like we're in a phase where we're um, showing, not telling. How long before we get to a phase where we're involving and immersing rather than showing? Well, this is this is actually a, I don't understand why we're not showing already, to be honest. Um, yeah, so we're we're showing but involving. What do so you mean? How, well, that that I presume one of the key mechanics for children to learn is that they create, they are involved, they interact rather right. than they are in something, they're actually interacting with something. Right. So you talked about the catapult example. Yes. How, how much of how much of it is the catapults, and how much of it is put a thing on and look around? It it's endless. Uh, it's like anything. You're gonna whatever the topic is. The key importance is creating a story around that topic. If it requires an immersive, like you say, interacting with the application, then then it should. Uh, things like the shark. There's talks about when we do a full immersive experience, the creator is talking about having a moment where you're sitting in the bottom of the ocean and you spawn a tuna and you, you put the tuna out in the water in front of you and you watch the shark eat it or you watch the food chain. So you are creating a food chain for the shark and if you take away certain things, you watch what happens. So it's finding ways to immerse the kids and get their knowledge wrapped around of how they're directly affecting it again um, allowing kids to fail too is another thing. So if they did do the catapult thing, 
it says no, it's not going to work. So as long as kids see what's, why it's not working too, it's a really good important factor in creating these experiences. Right, and very patiently waiting down the front. Um, I don't know where it's just wait for the microphone. We're going to make this the last question, but the wait has been long, so. Um, are there any issues about the technology in children's eyes? Because it's something that I've come across when we've looked at developing projects for children, and there are various people who have concerns about it. And what age groups you're working in? I was waiting for that question. It is a it's a tricky uh, topic. Uh, things are changing. Technology is changing. The screen types are changing. I think that's why if you are a parent that is concerned of your kids being lost in a headset, that's why using uh, iPads in your phone where they can hold it and it's in front of them and you, you can see what they're looking at is quite important in interacting that way so they're not completely immersed. Um, the beauty of the augmented reality t-shirt one is that they're looking through at you. So what they're seeing is you wearing the t-shirt so they're not completely immersed in this ultra world 24-7. They're actually having influence with what's around them, so they're still interacting, so it's not that scary. I think, like anything, you don't want your kids sitting in front of the TV set for 16 hours a day, so the same with VR. You don't want it glued on their head for six hours, because that, I mean, even for us, it's, it's a bit tiring. So. Yeah, the, the, I mean, there's the, I have children who try to live in that uh, yeah. parallel universe, but it's just, because I'm in a situation where I'd like to get around it, you know, I don't want it to be a problem. But is there something not so much about the endless immersion in that world, but actually, you know, the physical evolution of children's eyes at that point, where, where they're focusing on very close stuff, which actually is damaging? Have you done any? It's, it's still new days. I won't, I'm not going to quote things 100% on you on that, because it is new days, and it's, it's parents can decide to bring it into their homes or not. Um, that's why I say, like, a lot of people... I recommend really young to, to hold iPads and phones and get them that way and then bring them in to when the phones get better. The Vive, you look at a Vive screen compared to your phone up close, it's, it's a completely different experience. In six months I can tell you something and it can change again. So I would dismiss it as part of um, the classroom. I just think in small doses I can't see the, the damage of it whatsoever but again putting someone in it for six hours, I could see that be tiring on their eyes. So. Brilliant. Well, yeah, we better make that the last one. So just say thank you so much, Kim. Thanks. Fantastic.